I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 21st of August, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today is my wife Dominica's birthday, and tonight we'll be celebrating her birthday at a party at Via Via. But before then, I'm in Managua recording for the day. I have no particular agenda. I'm standing out by the highway, so it's getting pretty loud. Sorry about that. I've got the Hilton behind me, and we're just going to go explore a little bit of the downtown part of the city so you can see what it's like, because we don't do enough filming in Managua. So let's head out. I'm walking northbound on the Carretera Messiah, starting from the Hilton Princess, which is just behind me. We're about to go past the Intercontinental, which I'm gonna turn around and show you in a second. And we are heading uh, north towards the lake, but there's a number of things along the way. So I've never really walked the Carretera Messiah, even though we're out here on it all the time. So we're gonna just do some exploring in this region on foot, which is a little bit exciting. And a lot of people don't walk downtown Managua. It gets a bad rap and certainly it is more dangerous than other cities in Nicaragua, but I'm really interested in doing a lot more here in Managua on foot and just getting out in public because it does get a bad rap and we wanna bring this city to you guys and show you that even here, in Managua, it's really not that bad. Now, I'm not saying you should get out and walk around on foot if you don't know your way around Nicaragua, and I definitely would not recommend walking around with a camera. That's a little bit ridiculous in any large city if you don't know what you're doing, especially if you're alone, like I am, but that's okay, because we're gonna have a good one here. It is a Saturday that I'm recording this, and uh, yeah, we're here downtown. We're gonna be up at the Circle Prison, but I'm gonna spin this around and show you the Intercontinental. And we're just coming up on Metro Centro, which is one of the two major malls here in the city. The other major one being the Gallerias at Santo Domingo. This one's a little bit farther northwest, so you're more likely to use it if you're like us and living in Leon out to the west. But if you're in, say, Granada or Messiah, you're more likely to use the Galleria. So that one's a little bit bigger. But for us, we're, uh, we're connected to the west into Managua and so we tend to use things on the west side of the city quite a bit more. We got a lot of traffic out here today, so it's a little bit tough. I just had to step onto the character. Uh, there's no sidewalk in this particular section, which is odd considering where it is, but we're gonna turn the camera around because you can see a bunch of the stuff right now where we are. Traffic can be a little bit crazy here in Managua and getting across different streets and stuff sometimes is a little bit of a challenge. But for the most part, if you're on foot, because the city's really designed around people being on foot and, and slower moving vehicles, such as the one that's about to come behind me, it's actually not that bad getting around. A little bit of patience getting across like this circle, which is really near Metro Centro, not bad at all. I want to point out this high rise behind me. I Hopefully I'm pointing right at it. This is the tallest apartment building in the city. It does have apartments available. I know nothing about it, but it looks really interesting and I always want to get in there and film it. Maybe someday they'll let us, uh, not that we've asked. I mean, maybe they would let us today. <laughs> and, but it's just, that's a landmark kind of here in the area around Metro Centro. And I'm really hoping you guys can hear me over the traffic. So I'm speaking really loudly. Hopefully I'm not like shouting at you, uh, but it is pretty loud out here because I'm in the middle of the Carretera on this big circle. Uh, and I don't know what happened. There was something in the center here. I don't know where this went but just recently. So we're gonna continue walking north and it's really a gorgeous day. You can see the sky. This is nice. We got some overcast. It's not super hot. It's a little bit warmer. It's definitely warmer than it was in Leon when we left this morning. So it's, it could be cooler. Managua gets pretty decent. It's a little bit warm, but it's a really nice day. I'm enjoying this walk already. One thing that I like a lot about Managua is that it's very green. They actually have a lot of treed and, and like open space around the city. Now that has its negatives. It means that the city takes longer to drive around. It's potentially more expensive. It's a little bit more challenging in a lot of ways, but you get a lot of fresh air. You get a lot of more quiet spaces because the city has not built up since the 1972 earthquake really caused everything to build really low. And uh, with all these green spaces, you actually get, I'm obviously still on the highway, uh, you get a lot of really nice areas that are quite pleasant. It helps keep the city cool. And uh, you know, you can see this is pretty deep. This is like an entire field over here behind me with a lot of trees around it. And if we turn to look on the other side, you know, we've got a boulevard here. We got green in the middle and then we got trees and stuff on the other side. And uh, a lot of that goes pretty deep and even businesses and stuff, <laughs> getting yelled at, is uh, you have quite a bit of uh, just, just 
foliage throughout the city. So it really maintains a pretty good uh, uh, ambient environment. Um, I think that's redundant. Uh, throughout much of the city. And they have like a few lakes, which obviously they're not going to just you know, concrete over or whatever, but there are a number of lakes throughout the city as well, not just the big one in the north, but in the middle of the city there are some too. So there's a lot, and a lot of parks and stuff. So while it may not be the most green city ever, it certainly leans on the green side and makes for a pretty pleasant environment where otherwise, if you were looking at it on a map or whatever, you may not think of it in that way uh, until you walk around a bit. It only takes a little bit of walking along the route that we're doing on the Carretera Messiah heading north before we come across the National Baseball Stadium. This is a big piece of national pride here, both because it is a beautiful, large, modern stadium, very popular here in the country, but also because, and this is the home of the Board Indios, uh, the, the team here in uh, Managua, uh, which is not one of the leading teams, but they're one of the major leagues. Uh, and it is, uh, um, baseball is the number one sport by far in the country. This is the national sport, so this is where some of the biggest concerts happen, the biggest baseball games, even if other teams like Leon and Rivas end up in the finals. This is where they'll play the final game, things like that. We came here for the final game two years ago. Uh, so this is this is really cool. If you're gonna be in uh, Managua for any amount of time and you wanna check out a baseball game, this is where you'll come. Definitely worth doing. I recommend this a lot. If you have any interest in baseball whatsoever, just generally into sports, whatever, baseball in Nicaragua, something you gotta check out. All right, we're just coming from this park across the street and we're coming up on Laguna Tiscapa. This is one of the lakes in the middle of the city and it's a really beautiful spot that surprisingly very few people come out to but it's a neat spot if you're walking around the city just happen across it this is a pretty cool spot it is also along its other bank is the home of the nicaraguan military both the army and the navy are based here and it has one of the famous trees of managua the managua trees are the trees of life Arboles de la Vida, uh, de la Vida uh, is here, as well as one of the big statues of Sandino, the national hero, would be the equivalent kind of of George Washington here of Nicaragua. Uh, let's take a look at this lake. All right, guys, I have no idea where I am, but this looks to be a university and it was not block off, blocked off in any way, but it's right next to the military base in the middle of the city. And boy, it's dark all of a sudden. A storm has rolled in, but I'm hoping to get to some high ground and find a cool view. So we're just kind of exploring, hoping we don't get in trouble. It seems like the kind of place we're allowed to be. Don't seem to be in anybody's way. We're gonna find out. I'm on really high ground above the lake which is why I think this could be really interesting. Someone may be able to identify this looking behind me. I mean, it's easy to find on a map, right? Like it's west side of the lake, high point. I'm right next to the towers. I think I'm past the statue of Sandino, so I think we missed that. I think that's actually in the base. So I don't think you get to go to that. There's a guard dog right there. And uh, no, but there's a Petito's Jaw delivery thing here. So like, this can't be like, private. Really interesting though. Way, way high above the lake. I'm above the highway. The Carretera Messiah is just down there. So it's nice and quiet up here. There's nobody around. No idea what this is. Is this really like university? Is this just houses clinging to the hillside? Sometimes it happens that it's and a weird little area and they just, you know, people lived here and so they kept getting to live here. Uh, that actually kind of seems what it is. These might be homes with lake views. Actually, that'd be kind of fantastic. This is a neat little spot, super safe. Like it would be hard to get safer than here. And uh, like, take a look. I mean, clearly not mansions, but these could be some really neat lakeview homes in a really eclectic area. A little bit hard to access, but also dead center of things. Like, really interesting. I, uh, I'm glad I walked up here, but uh, I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need someone who knows the city better than me to give me some explanation of what this community is and what happened up here. But, so to fill you in, I'm a few, I'm quite a ways. Hola, buenas tardes. I am a ways away from my hotel and a storm has rolled in. So we've gotten a little bit of thunder and lightning. Obviously you get both. And 
it's uh, it's raining but not heavy yet and i'm still walking away from my hotel which is incredibly foolish uh and we're just going to kind of see what happens oh now i came upon i think i'm going to continue up here but i'm going to turn the camera around so you can see well i'm going to turn around so you can see this. so check this out this road goes down you can see one of the arbalets down there and there's another one right over here you can't really see it through the trees but this is staying on the high ground so i'm going to go this way see where it takes us all right, so this, this gave us away really quickly. This is the Colonia Oscar Perez Casar. So small community inside the barrio here in Managua. All right, talk about a view. I gotta come up here with one of the good cameras on a big lens. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this on the GoPro, but this is an amazing view from up here. Wow, check out the lake. more cool views i just stumbled on something a little bit surprising i had no idea where i was and being in a little community like this it's kind of like you're in like a secret wormhole taking you to different parts of the city that you never expected to be in so check out this view as we walk past this tree like this just popped out of nowhere That is the Crown Plaza, one of the landmarks of the city. So we're right behind it, kind of southeast-ish of the Crown Plaza. Uh, so we're pretty far towards downtown, but in this really, I mean, check out this little road I'm walking down. This is crazy how remote this is, and yet in the middle of the city. Buenas tardes. So this is interesting, this park here, which looks really cool, it's on the lake. Uh, you're not allowed to bring in cameras. You are allowed to bring in your cell phone. I just talked to the guard, so I'm just getting this information. You're allowed to bring in your cell phone, but you're not allowed to bring in a camera. And he was pretty chill. He's like, um, are you carrying a camera? Like, I've got a tripod and a camera, like I really have a camera. So I'm like, yeah, he's like, oh, you're not allowed. You can take video with your cell phone, but which it's the same quality, but I get it. Like there, I could have a pretty hardcore camera with me. I don't, it's a GoPro 9, but you know you just never know so but it's right back there I know exactly where it is now and so I live here right I'm just gonna come back sometime when I'm not carrying the camera he would have kept the camera for me but I'm I don't feel really comfortable just randomly leaving my camera uh, when I'm walking around so not gonna do that today but it'll be real easy to go back to and film in the future so no big deal I'm coming back past the Crown Plaza and uh, we're gonna head down the Carretera is just in front of me and we're gonna go down there and and head around uh, the lake on the long way because we can't go through up here but it looks like there's some interesting stuff up there and it's just one dollar if you're coming through on foot like me it's just a buck to get in so that's nice nice and easy not expensive and uh, we'll certainly check it out in the future when I just have a cell phone All right, I'm back out on the Carretera Messiah. I'm going under the trees here a little bit because that's where the sidewalk goes. We're heading, we're almost to the northwest corner of the lake now, of the Little Lake, and uh, I'm going past the high wall of the Crown Plaza, so it's kind of towering over me. Um, this has been really interesting. Like, I know this area, I've seen all this stuff around it a bunch of times, we're always driving like past in little pieces, but to do a loop of the lake on the Carretera Messiah is actually really interesting to kind of get a better picture uh, in person of how it all fits together and everything. And it's honestly a really beautiful area. There's a lot of nice hotels and restaurants and little communities and stuff. So this has been pretty cool. And like, this is Inari that I'm next to over here, which is a cool, fancy restaurant. And uh, this is the entrance for the Crown Plaza. We've got Oh, this is, yeah, of course, this is Plaza Inn Tour that we're coming up on right here, which is one of the smaller malls or large plazas here in the city. So that is where we are. A lot of nice stuff in this area. I'm glad I got to bring you guys along for this. Hopefully the rain doesn't get too heavy. I'm going to show the sky here in just a second. We went from kind of gray to, ooh, that's looking bad pretty quickly. Just going past a Chinese restaurant here at Plaza and Tour. I've actually never been in here, but I am aware that the Crown Plaza is the address of Intour. Intour, for those who don't know, is the Department of Tourism. So this is the front of the Crown Plaza right here, and you can't miss it. Like, it really stands out architecturally here in the city. It's one of the few buildings of its height, uh, and definitely the only one of its style. Uh, but this is, if you ever look, for the address of the Department of Tourism, they use this as their address. So I actually think they're in the building, but if they're not in the building, they're in the plaza here. That's why it's Plaza in Tour. Uh, but this is, this is a pretty cute little area.
All right, I actually didn't know this was here. I should have known this was here, but I don't know. But this is actually, so the Crown Plaza actually has a convention center that's not huge, but it looks quite nice. And also the Department of Energy is right over there. Of course, we're in downtown Managua, very close to the lake. So a lot of government offices are down here, for example. Okay, maybe I need to start heading back. But this is the Crown Plaza uh, Convention Center right here. We're gonna show that and then we're gonna start walking because the rain is coming and that, that was a lot. All right, so we got back. It was quite an adventure out in the rain. I spent about an hour and a half walking normal and then about an hour and a half in absolute downpour. So I'm recording this the next morning because it was it was impossible to do anything more. I was in quite a race to get back and make it to the wedding, but I want to cover a few of the things that happened. So uh, the water flowing through the streets was actually incredibly warm, actually warmer than it coming down because of course the ground gets really hot here. So it heats up the rainwater. You're actually walking through really warm water, which is weird. I, uh, I did quite a bit of damage to my sandals, which is a major problem because this is what I use for walking. So I've got to figure out some footwear stuff pretty quickly. These still work, but they're not as good as they were anymore. The a rainy day like that, I slip in the in the sandals so much it actually tears up the soles. Just the amount of walking I had to do, especially because there's so many hills. I'm right here in downtown Managua. I'm back. This is the, the Hilton Princess right here. And this is the Seminole, which I think you can see behind me. Uh, which is not really used anymore, but it was a it was a really famous hotel and it's used as a landmark in the city And I wanted to get some of this wall this beautiful sidewalk This is a lot of Managua has graffiti and some of it is really nice This is not bad. Uh, we get some really good stuff, but we, we're not like a graffiti city, but we have some high points There's a lot of just just you know old-fashioned terrible graffiti um, all throughout the city as well I'm hoping that more artists take an interest in in Managua because I think there's a lot of potential there's so many concrete walls this is a city that should be covered in beautiful graffiti it should be a thing that they make a point of and certainly some areas and some areas very near here do that but a lot of areas don't and I think it's a big missed opportunity there's tons of the city and just blank concrete that nobody like it's not even tagged let alone like artwork I don't know why that is um, just just no one's coming out and doing that it's not so much of the culture but much of Latin America is really into that like you find tons in mexico or in chile for example so uh so race back shoe damage crazy amount of rain of course it stopped raining right as i got back but luckily everything i was carrying with me works still today so the the gopro seems to be working fine you guys will let me know well i'll know when i'm editing did the microphone survive and that stuff but i'm, I'm showing good results on the monitor i have no way to test things when i'm in the field uh, just because of the, the equipment that it takes to be able to do uh, anything, I'm not able to upload anything from the GoPro while we're out under normal circumstances. I can if I do a lot of planning, but on day to day, it's not something I'm able to do. And uh, uh, so hopefully everything's good, but all the batteries I had with me are still working. Everything seems to be fine. It turned on everything, like no issues, but it went through so much water on that trip. I was really worried with the media kit and loose batteries in my pocket. Everything was soaked. But I got to tell a story really quickly. This will this will also probably get told in about a week. But uh, right as I got towards the end of the walk, after I was done doing the videos, I stopped at a uh, Super Seven, which is the the Quickie Mart of the Puma gas stations. Uh, and it was I walked in and it was packed. Like it was a really big one. It had so many people there eating, uh, which they have decent food here at the gas station. So it actually is kind of a destination sometimes. But this was extreme. And I walked in and someone was mopping behind me. I had so much water running off me. <laughs> they actually had to mop the floor everywhere I went. And I walked up and I bought two power aids because I'm like, I'm really dehydrated. I've been out for a bit. The rain makes you not notice how much fluid you're losing because um, you're staying cool. And uh, so I went up and I bought two of them and I took one and I just slammed it while I was in there and threw it out. And then uh, the empty. And then I uh, I walked back and, and it was only maybe a 15 minute max walk back to the hotel. Um, and I had sipped a little bit of the other one on the way back. And then in the hotel, I drank it probably within the next 15 minutes. So uh, there's been, you know, there's a lot of talk about how much water you should have versus how much uh, hydration fluid you should have. And, um, you know, as someone who dehydrates uh, easily because I sweat a lot, uh, especially because I get outside, I, I'm in a hot climate, I'm a big guy, I'm, I sweat from my head naturally, I lose a lot of salt. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to, I need to be more careful about getting uh, electrolytes because, uh, you know, we, there was just this case and doctors were talking about it. This girl who drank, I don't know, two, three, four, 
I can't remember how many, but not that much, water bottles. And I drink, when I drink water bottles, I drink liters, right? Not normal people water bottles. And some girl, I think in California, drank like four and died from uh, from having too much water. She, she desolidified. And uh, uh, you, you gotta keep up your saline and the doctors are like, yeah, when you're, when you're really dehydrated, you gotta make sure you're getting electrolytes, make sure you drink Gatorade, Powerade, Electrolyte, something like that. And so I was like, I was trying to be conscientious about it. And so I, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty dehydrated and I need a lot of fluids right now. So two, well, it turns out this actually put me into a cardiac event. Um, I had so much potassium in my system that my heart, my normal resting heart rate is about 68, which is not great, but it's, it's pretty good. And uh, anything in the, in the low 60s to mid 70s is me on a good day, but 68 really pretty much where I rest. And I was at the event later today, just sitting, doing nothing, and my heart alarm goes off on my watch, and I'm hovering at 128. 128. So we're we're like, what is going on? So we're trying to monitor it, trying to figure out what to do. Like, am I too hot? Like, I was warm, but I wasn't like that warm. And like, what is going on? Like, I don't feel like I could, at 128, you feel it, right? Like my left eye is starting to get, my vision's a little bit blurry. I can, I can just feel it in my ears. It's not like I'm going numb. I just like, oh, I can sense something's going on. And uh, we grabbed an EKG because my wife has one. I did an EKG and it's like, yeah, your heart's fast, but everything else is okay. We're like, what is going on? Luckily, we're sitting with a doctor and she goes, oh boy, you, so you're not feeling anything? Nothing's happening, you don't have any history? She's like, could you be having a potassium problem? I'm like, well, I'm trying to picture eating bananas or something. Like, what have I done? I haven't taken it in a... I had two Powerades so fast. And she's like, oh yeah, that's too much potassium for your system, you can't do that. Uh, you need to get you need to get water and flush that now. So we really quickly went to the car, grabbed a liter of water, and I just slammed it. And immediately, within like two minutes, my heart just goes right back to normal. <laughs> like, wow. So the dangers of those power drinks, when I was younger and an athlete, um, I used to do, like, I'm not an athlete now, I'm just walking around. So two power aids is a lot. When I was an athlete, uh, we were taught to cut it with water not because of the excess potassium, but because uh, as you as you really are working out, the flavor gets much stronger and you want more water. Like you just get a lot more out of it. So you would just do that. Uh, so I used to avoid that back when I would take in a lot of fluids while exercising. But now just going for a walk, it's just a set of circumstances led me to have two really quickly. And it would never have occurred to me because when I drink water, if you said, Scott, I need you to drink three liters of water in 15 minutes, I'd be like, oh, that's probably more than I want, but it would never occur to me that it would be a problem. Right, like three, my body, I will sit uh, at night quite often and drink several liters of water while I'm working late at night because as the night gets later, I get thirstier. And so it's just, I tend to drink and then in the morning I feel great. Um, but so to drink two non-liter Powerades, to me, two of them is about a serving of fluids. And the amount of potassium in that was just way more than my body could take, given I assume I had not had a bunch of fluids. Had I had lots of water like I normally do, and then slam two of these, my expectation is that probably would not have happened. I was probably in a low water reservoir and, and just over potassiumated potassium, I don't know, um, all at once. I don't know. Um, it was definitely the fastest that I've ever drank too, because the one I just, I drank the whole thing as fast as I could and threw it out because I didn't want to carry it. So maybe that led to it, I don't know, but I was able to offset it with water really, really fast. It was a, it was a strange situation. Uh, but it was a good walk and I'm gonna go out tomorrow, I hope, and get a little bit more of Managua for you guys. We didn't get nearly as much as I wanted today, but the storm really made it pretty tough. Nothing, nothing we could do about that. And I'm not in Managua to film, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that I'm here. But it's been so gorgeous this, uh, this weekend that I'm actually doing the recording that, uh, that it's, it's nice that we're able, able to get out. So uh, just a quick reminder that today, is my the actual birthday uh, that we are so this is releasing on the 28th today that I'm recording this is the 21st that is my wife's birthday boy these days some days I just cannot keep the date straight I always know when her birthday is I don't know when today is so today is the 21st uh, so in in the actual 21st in the evening uh, we do Dominica's birthday party. So a little bit of our day update. So if you're just here to see the Managua stuff or my adventures in uh, creating a cardiac event, 
that is that. Uh, otherwise, the news for the 21st, it is a Monday. So happy Monday, everybody. We went uh, this evening all day. I was running around doing uh, work stuff and errands. Uh, Paul had to run to Managua to do so. I was going to do it originally, but there's just so much going on. So he ran to Managua to pick up a bunch of Dominica's presents and stuff are staged in Ciudad Sandino, uh, along with uh, Marcella, who he grabbed and brought, she's not one of her presents, and brought them back to, to Leon, because tonight is our big party at Via Via. Normally, it is trivia night at Via Via on Mondays. I don't know if they canceled it just for us or what, but they, that was canceled. So we had basically the whole front room uh, which is huge. Uh, we had a good sized party. We had a couple cakes, um, did variedades platter, platters. There was a lot to eat. I was really surprised. I've not had the veg, which I'm also surprised I've never had the vegetarian variedades there, but we got that and it had a uh, tuna salad on it. That was fantastic. It's not, definitely not vegan, but that's very hard to do. And it had like hard boiled eggs. Like in no way is it vegan. It's very loose vegetarian. It's like traditional vegetarian, which is now pesca, uh, ovo lacto pescatarian. And, um, but it had really good uh, tostadas and, and queso and, and different stuff. So I was really happy with that. Like it was from really good food. And uh, we, had a, we had a nice party and hung out there until uh, about midnight or so. And, uh, and then went out dancing after that. So uh, at 23. So it was, it was a pretty, pretty good wild uh, evening here for Dominica's birthday. And uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, glad I was able to show you more of Managua. And uh, we'll be bringing you more, I hope, tomorrow when I will see you all.